Let's talk about isotopes and relative atomic mass in GCSE and to be fair, the start of A-level as well. So the element that we typically look to when we're talking about relative atomic mass is chlorine. And that's because if you look at your GCSE periodic table, which I know is a poster on your wall, it's your, um, your screensaver, we'd see that the number up at the top of the um, chlorine periodic table tile is a decimal, whereas all of your other ones, apart from copper, are whole numbers. And that's because this number up here in, at the top of your tile is not the mass number, but that is the relative atomic mass, which we give the symbol A with a subscript R, not to be confused with argon. OK, so the relative atomic mass, let's talk about what that actually means. The reason that we end up with a decimal is because chlorine atoms actually exist in multiple forms. So if we think back to our atomic notation that we looked at in my last video, so make sure that you go back and watch that one. The chlorine can have, well, we'll have an atomic number of 17 because all chlorine atoms have got the same number of protons. There are some forms of chlorine with a mass number of 35. And then there are other forms of chlorine, again, same number of protons, of course, but instead with a mass number of 37. So let's consider how many protons, how many neutrons and how many electrons we have in each of these. For our first one, our protons, that's given by our atomic number, so that's 17. Our electrons, let's do that next. For a neutral atom, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, so also 17. And the number of neutrons we get from our mass number minus our atomic number to give us 18. For our other form of chlorine, still 17 protons and therefore still 17 electrons. But this time for our neutrons, 37 minus 17 gives us 20. So what do we notice about them? They have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. And we call these isotopes, okay? Which by definition are atoms of an element with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. Or thinking of it in terms of these two values, we can say they have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. Okay? So these are the individual atoms in their atomic notation. When we think about the relative atomic mass, that's actually an average of our isotopes, okay? So we've got two isotopes, chlorine with a mass of 35, chlorine with a mass of 37, and we take the average of that to find the relative atomic mass. So with that in mind, you might be thinking, so if we're taking an average of these two values, shouldn't that give us 35 plus 37 divided by 2, surely that would be 36 and not 35.5. But the reason that we end up with 35.5 is because these isotopes exist in different abundances. So naturally occurring, there are different um, amounts of each of these isotopes that occur naturally. So if we take our chlorine, oh, where should I go? Let's go over here. If we take our chlorine 35, that has a relative abundance of 75%. And therefore, our chlorine 37 has got a relative abundance of 25%. If we want to look at that um, diagrammatically, oh, I like that word. Okay, if we had a pot full of chlorine atoms, let's say we had four chlorine atoms in a beaker or in a pot, three of them would be chlorine 35 and one of them would be chlorine 37. Okay, 
25%, three quarters, one quarter. So now when we're calculating the relative atomic mass, we don't just think about which two isotopes we have, we think about the abundance in which they exist. So let's clear some space so we can show how this calculation works. Because we need a weighted, a weighted average, sorry, so weighted mean between our two isotopes, we're going to calculate our relative atomic mass as the mass of our first isotope multiplied by its abundance plus the mass of the second isotope multiplied by its abundance. And then to find the mean, we'll divide that by the total abundance, which in this case, because we're dealing with percentages, is going to be 100%. Okay, let's label this nicely so you're super clear what's going on. Mass of our first isotope. Mass of our second. Abundance of first isotope, abundance of second. So now plugging those numbers from our actual chlorine sample, um, we would get as our um, relative atomic mass, let's just put it directly into the expression, the mass of our first isotope is 35 and its abundance is 75%. The mass of our second isotope is 37 multiplied by its abundance of 25%. Plug that all in, divide by 100 and you end up with 35 points, well 0.45 but that rounds up to 35.5 as your relative atomic mass which is what we then find in our periodic table tile. Okay, it does not matter which um, element we're looking at. And it also doesn't matter how many isotopes we have. We still calculate it in the same way. We take our masses, we multiply by their abundances, and we keep adding their terms divided by the total abundance of all of those isotopes. And at GCSE, because we're dealing with percentages, that's going to be divided by 100. For more um, GCSE chemistry explainer videos, make sure that you like you comment and you subscribe so that you see all of the future videos coming your way.